was Thanksgiving Day, 1988. Barbara arrived at my dorm shortly after noon. Barb was my favorite sister. There are five of them. And yes, they get ranked. Temperamentally, Barb and I are very different. As a child, Barb was pale, had the slender build of a picky eater, and was very quiet. She could entertain herself for hours just by sitting in the corner with a book. I could neither sit still nor shut up. My body was constantly sunburned and or covered in scrapes. I was sturdy and muscular, always hungry. I'd eat anything that mom put in front of me, making a mess and asking for seconds. I was loud. <laughs> Despite these differences, and even though she was four years older than me, as the two youngest kids in the family, we somehow always got lumped together as the little kids. From my perspective, this was an excellent pairing. I was the sort of kid who would sit there and poke someone to get them to pay attention to me. With Barb, I didn't have to. She provided me with an audience before I even knew that that was what I was seeking. On Saturdays, she'd often make me pancakes. Thus it seemed fitting that on this Thanksgiving, my first away from home, Barb would make the trip from New York City to Pittsburgh to keep me company. For both of us, home was Omaha, Nebraska, where we had grown up and where my parents still lived. The cost of flying home for Thanksgiving was prohibitive, so we had agreed to spend it together back east. Barbara had gotten up before the crack of dawn in order to take the long train ride and make it to Pittsburgh by early afternoon. I had high hopes for the weekend. I loved Barbara and was happy to see her, but it was more than just that. All my life, I'd been the kid's sister who relied on others for direction, never actually in charge of anything myself. I was hoping to escape that paradigm by blithely showing Barb a great time in my new city. I was in college now. She had only recently graduated. I was a whole world away from being the little girl who used to read Barb's diary without permission and then feel shocked by its revelations. We were practically peers now. We set off for the short walk to Flavors of India. Why Indian food? Growing up in Omaha in the 1980s, I was never exposed to Indian cuisine. So when I went off to school in sophisticated Pittsburgh, I was quite proud of myself for making friends with a group of people who would periodically invite me to skip out on the dining hall food and join them at the Flavors of India, <laughs> just around the corner on Craig Street. I assumed that since the proprietors of the restaurant were not actually American-born, they would not be taking Thanksgiving as a holiday and would therefore be available to serve me as I impressed my older sister with my knowledge of naan and paneer. <laughs> she might be the intellectual one, but I was the adventurous one. I began fantasizing about the tandoori chicken that I would soon devour. But the walk went quickly as Barb and I caught up until cold reality hit us in the form of a closed sign on the door to flavors of India. It's okay. There are a ton of restaurants on Craig Street. One of them is bound to be open. Barb gave me a surprised look displaying her infinite patience by saying only, you mean we don't have reservations somewhere? Oh, Barbara, this isn't New York. We don't need reservations. Barb looked a little skeptical, but she gamely smiled and agreed that a further exploration of Craig Street was in order. So we continued to trudge through the slushy snow on that gray November day. I babbled on about my new life, Joey, the fellow cross-country runner whom I was dating, the dangers of having a pizza joint on the ground floor of my dorm, and how my philosophical opposition to the Greek system prevented me from joining a sorority but did not prevent me from drinking the fraternity's free beer. <laughs> Barbara, ever the good listener, chuckled and made sympathetic clucking noises as appropriate. Our conversation began to lag as we continued north on Craig Street, past a diverse array of dining establishments, some ethnic, 
some fine dining, some college casual, but all closed. Finally, we reached Center Street, the end of the restaurant district. It was probably only about a mile from my dorm, but as the wet snow lapped the bottom of our pant legs and the hunger pain, pains ratcheted themselves up a notch, it seemed a lot farther. My brash confidence was beginning to falter. Barb's quiet demeanor, normally a source of comfort, took on an aura of disappointment. Any of my other sisters, they would have begun to berate me at this point. Barbara did not. This, of course, made me feel much worse. Those hopes of breaking out of the kid sister paradigm were fading. I mapped out our, our route in my head, turned right on center, then a few more blocks, passed some pawn shops and dive bars to the next right turn on Moorwood Avenue, where the neighborhood started to improve and our walk would lead us past a few blocks of stately brick homes until we arrived back at my dorm. I began racking my brain to recall if I had anything edible in my room other than instant coffee, raspberry flavored Bigelow tea, and Keystone Light Beer. <laughs> Nothing came to mind. Just as I was about to announce this fact, a familiar and festive logo came into view. Warmly lit, radiating hospitality, 7-Eleven. <laughs> At once the origins of this name came back to me, as explained by my mother. It's open seven days a week, 11 hours a day. <laughs> Burgeoning atheist though I was, I couldn't help but utter a prayer of thanks for rampant American capitalism. We hurried inside to choose our feast. Although it was late afternoon, breakfast sandwiches were still available. <laughs> Not much of a demand on that particular day, I suppose. We perused the selection of pizza chicken tenders, and corn dog rollers. <laughs> I had planned on a non-traditional Thanksgiving dinner. This certainly fit the bill. <laughs> and in reality, I probably had a lot more knowledge of downmarket convenience store food than I did of Indian food. However, I wasn't about to give Barbara an opinion on chicken tenders versus chicken wings. After weighing our options, Barbara selected a microwavable cheeseburger. I lived large with a big bite hot dog. Two of them. Still the sturdy kid wolfing down whatever crap I could find. Barbara, with her more refined palate, limited herself to just one cheeseburger. My big bites paired nicely with hot chocolate. Barb's cheeseburger was complemented by hot coffee. Our feet warmed up and our blood glucose levels began to rise. We chuckled. I admitted that I had screwed up big time. That maybe I did still need a big sister looking after me and making me pancakes. As relish from my overloaded hot dog trickled down my chin, I raised my styrofoam cup for a silent toast to Barbara, wherever I may find her. First time vamp Emily Burke.